What is menopause? As a natural part of aging, women generally between the age of 45 and 55 start experiencing a natural decline in reproductive hormones. Menopause is the time that marks the end of one's menstrual cycle. It is diagnosed after one has gone 12 months without a menstrual cycle or period. In the months or years leading up to menopause, which is called the perimenopause phase, symptoms range from physiological changes such as irregular periods, vaginal dryness and hot flashes to psychological changes such as forgetfulness, mood changes such as depression and anxiety and even a feeling of loss of self-worth. While menopause is a natural biological process, it is to a large part not discussed very openly in society. Many a times the subject is treated as a taboo, shrugged off or even ridiculed. Besides the lack of discussion in India, we also face the problem of early onset of menopause. The average age of the onset of menopause is 46 years in India versus 51 globally. So is menopause only about hot flashes, losing hair and as described by many as losing your mind? How much higher is the risk of heart disease, cancer during this time? And are all the symptoms that they face during this phase related to menopause? And can you live a normal life or maybe your best life with menopause? We quiz Dr. Amrinder Bajaj, a senior gynecologist currently associated with Fortis Memorial Research Institute, the previous head of the Gynac department at Max Pitampura, a gold medalist who has done her post-graduation from Ames and who has a special interest in menopause about all this and more, which is addressed in her book, Live Your Best Life. Uh, give us a sense in terms of what you see as the key misconce misconceptions within Indian society when it comes to menopause and how should one address it? Menopause is the end of menstruation, not the end of the world. So people think that this is a stepping stone into old age and they will be ridiculed or be, be, be called an old hag or a prune, which is not true. They have got a active, healthy life ahead. As with the increase in lifespan, more and more women are spending at least one third of their lives in the post-menopausal period. Okay. And uh, they live very healthy, happy lives. They need some, during this change, they need some adjustments because they are bewildered and confused. And they need, uh, we should not grudge them this period of adjustment. A supportive family will be of good help to them. Once they've crossed that thing and they've, they've settled down into this state, they're calm waters and there's a lot they can achieve in life as yet. So what is the age that one should probably visit their gynac to understand where they are placed in the larger scheme of things and how far or close they are to menopause? Uh, there's a phase called perimenopause that occurs for a varying period before actual menopause sets in. And some women are confused because they start having menopausal symptoms at that stage also. They might still be having their periods, but they get hot flashes and cold sweats. So that's one thing they should come to the doctor for. Secondly, every symptom that occurs above 40 is attributed to menopause. This blanket statement is not true because there could be other underlying conditions that could cause menstrual irregularities, which could range from polyps to fibroids to hormonal disturbance to even cancers. So it's a good idea to visit the doctor that time. Thirdly is post-coital uh, bleeding, that is bleeding after sex. That people are so embarrassed to go to the doctor because they think that's, uh, I mean, at this age, they want to have sex or something like that, which is very, very um, understandable. It is good actually for their general health and sense of well-being. And that could be a symptom of cancer. It's not always, you don't have to be scared, but quite a few times it turns out to be cancer. Thirdly, intermenstrual bleeding, bleeding in between the cycles, two periods, spotting or bleeding, that is also not acceptable. Okay. Normal menopause means if periods come late, they become scanty, and then eventually they stop. Some people, they stop immediately also. Okay. So what are the most common uh, symptoms to watch out for in the perimenopause phase as well as in the menopause phase? Uh, menstrual irregularities and uh, the symptoms of menopause that can occur even before you've stopped your periods. But usually a lot of women, the transition is absolutely smooth. And they wonder what this fuss is all about, ki menopause ho gaya, ho gaya. They just don't, it's, it's, they are the, I mean, they're lucky, not few, quite a few of them. 
Others have mild symptoms that are treated well by lifestyle changes or positive attitude or yoga or meditation and all that. Only a few have symptoms that are severe enough to interrupt their day-to-day -day life and that warrant a medical consult. These symptoms include hot flashes, cold sweats that interfere with your work or your um, they're embarrassed in, you feel embarrassed in your social life also. Then there's uh, urinary complaints. Sometimes the women can't hold their urine and they have to have such a strong urge that they wet their panties by the time they reach to the toilet. Or stress incontinence when they pass urine while sneezing or coughing. Thirdly, is vaginal dryness that leads to painful intercourse. And others, of course, there are fatigue, weight gain, even if you're eating the same amount of food or doing the same amount of exercises and um, skin changes, hair loss on the head, but it does appear on your chin and your upper lip. So these are the things that you have to look out for. So all of, these, are, all of these symptoms yes, that you are talking about, Dr. Bajaj, also points to a dwindling youth. And that could actually put a lot of stress when it comes to mental health. The psychological impact of menopause, how important is that to be addressed at this point in time? And how does one address it? The psychological impact is profound because we have, like, we've started aping the West and have become a youth-oriented society. It is not a stepping stone to old age. It is not that you will be less attractive to the other sex or you won't be, you will lose out on a lot of things which you would do before. So the psych people start feel, have a, having a diminished sense of self-worth, there are minor memory lapses, There's, they forget where they kept their keys and all that, and they worry that they've got Alzheimer. The thing is, if you know that you've forgotten, that means you don't have to have Alzheimer. And then there are other things that can trouble you, like um, um, anxiety, depression, and if you've had these symptoms before, they get accentuated. And uh, then that is what these people, if you get, have a good moral support from family and then otherwise, if you really need a consult, a psychologist or psychiatric consult, there's no harm in visiting them. What is the biggest risk factor if in case you don't get tested for menopause or get treated correctly for menopause? And could you leave us with some thoughts on some therapies such as HRT, which is hormone replacement therapies and some important lifestyle changes which need to be made? See, till the woman has her female sex hormones, the estrogens specifically, estrogen progesterone, especially estrogens, she's protected from heart problems. So after menopause, she can be equally ex exposed to heart diseases as her male counterpart. There could be bone issues, bone health will suffer. She could have fractures. You must have seen frail old women falling in the bathroom and just a slight fall will lead to fractures. And thirdly are cancers. So these things are then the other uh, metabolic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, because menopause and aging go hand, hand, by, hand in hand. So they also can occur side by side. So first of all is lifestyle changes. Eat right, sleep tight, and exercise light. Five, 30 minutes of exercise for five times a day, out of which there should be two days of weight training exercises for the bone and muscle. Muscle mass also starts dwindling, so for that also. And then there should be breathing, relaxation, yoga, meditation. Then you should keep yourself mentally occupied also. You have got relatively more time. There's no child rearing, child uh, bearing left now. The elders in the family are gone. So you should take up the creative activities that you had left because of all this uh, before those then maintain a strong social circle of friends also so that you are in interacting with other people don't stay as, as a recluse so these are the things that will help most of you then after that there are if the hot flushes are too severe if the vaginal dryness is really interfering is not helped by using lubricants those and thirdly is if you get premature menopause then you have to use take hrt under strict medical supervision after a battery of tests, because there's a very slight increased risk of um, cancers of the breast and the heart, sorry, and the uh, cervix with the HRT. HRT is now called MHT, menopausal hormone therapy.